Early in 1854, my husband's brother, James, came to our house and he was excited. He just returned from Kansas Territory. He learned that the land was being opened up and you could buy it cheap and settle there. I looked at my husband and I saw the gleam in his eye and I knew what was going to happen. He'd made his mind up and we were going to move, whether I wanted to or not. Well, the first of March, John went out to the territory so he could get the land, get a house for us. That left me and our seven kids to get the wagons ready, get everything ready, and drive out. We took two ox drum carts with all our belongings. One had our household stuff, our clothing, and our furniture. The second one had all our supplies. Along with this, we took extra oxen, four horses, eight mules, and a bull traveling with our herd. And I insisted that we take chickens, so we had a crate on the back of the, one of the wagons. The one wagon held, like I said, food, tools. I packed flour, hardtack, bacon, coffee, sugar, cornmeal and vinegar, and dried fruit and vegetables. And I insisted we take a, uh, a barrel of pickled cucumbers because we weren't going to get scurvy, and I was going to prevent that. In the second wagon, well, that had our household things, our farm goods, plus my spinning wheels, table, I also took books, readers, tablets, and pencils because there were no schools where we were going and my kids were going to learn to read. We packed sacks of corn, flour, corn, wheat, and oats so we could plant that when we got here. I had packets of garden seeds and dormant rhubarb and peach, apple, trees so that I could have those. Well, we, in one wagon, we tied our beds up and we kept them there. Now, my oldest son was 15 and he was going to drive the second wagon and I would drive the first. The two youngest children, which were three and five, they'd ride in the wagon with me. And the 13 and 14 year old boys would walk behind the animals to keep them from wandering off and together. That was their job to tend the animals. The 10 and 12 year old, they could walk beside the wagon as the weather was, when it was nice. The night before we left, our family and friends gathered at my mother's house. It was hard because I knew I wasn't going to see these people ever again. And I also looked around and looked, I'm going to miss all these luxuries we have, you know, I'm going somewhere. I don't know what's going to happen to us. I don't know what's going to be there, out there on the frontier, and that was scary. Well, on March 15th, we set out that morning for our new home in the Kansas Territory from Illinois. The morning was bleak and dreary. Now, the first day out was kind of an adventure for the kids, and they kind of had fun with it. Of course, by noon, that was not fun anymore. We stopped for lunch. We go about three, four hours, and then we stop for lunch. Now, I didn't start a fire because we didn't want this to drag out and wouldn't get back on the road, so whatever I had cooked the night before, leftover chicken, beef, whatever, and bread, that's what our lunch was. Then we'd hit the trail again. Driving a wagon pulled by an oxen is quite a job. My muscles were sore and they were tired. And you have to be on the lookout at all times because if you hit a, ho a hole, go for hold, whatever, your wheel could break, you could overturn your wagon. By the time we were all ready. So we built a fire. I cooked whatever meat I had, made bread, a little, few of the dried vegetables. And the boys went out and they uh, tended the animals, make sure they stayed together. Because usually in the morning they had to go back out and find them because it was wide open. Now when we went to bed that night, I took the two youngest children and my other daughter. We slept in the wagon while it was cold. 
The boys had to camp outside near the fire. When the weather warmed up, we all moved outside because it got kind of hot in that wagon. Now in the morning, I'd get my, my green coffee beans out and I would roast them and I'd make a pot of coffee, fry up some bacon, and make some biscuits. And if by luck, the chickens laid, we had an egg. And that's how our days went. We made good progress for several days, and then one day, it rained. It was really safer just to stop and not go on because you can slip, you can slide, the oxen get a little funny, so we just stayed for the day and went on the next day. Now, you really have to be very watchful when you're driving these because, and going across country, the kids were walking, there's snakes, there's, you gotta watch the water, because the water's bad. You can get very sick. Um, when you're crossing rivers, we had to be so careful because you could either, animals get spooked, wagon tip over. If you were crossing the ferry, you had to be extra careful because if the wagon slid off, it, it would sink. And anyone on it, especially children, would drown. And we'd heard a case two weeks before we'd come of that happening. Well, one day I'm driving along and I heard the kids screaming. I hear bark, uh, black yard dog pitching a fit. I pulled the oxen over, jumped down, ran over. There's a, a copperhead, or a, I'm sorry, wrong state, rattlesnake. Blackie is between my youngest little Nelly, keeping the snake away from her. Well, my oldest son grabs the gun, comes out and kills the snake. From then, then on, those kids stayed right beside my wagon so I could see them. I was taking no chances. Well, May 15th, we arrived in the Kansas Territory. John met us at the little town before, took us out there. I got the first look at our home. Oh my, it was a sod house. It's a dirt house. Go inside, there are no partitions, it's a dirt floor, and you got grass hanging down. Now John was very careful to make sure we had the right place. People way down the road, he didn't pick such a good one, and they had snakes in their house all the time. They dropped from the grass, come in from the sides, so you had to be real careful where you put your house. Well, one of the first things I did was I got the quilts out, and I made partitions. When you've got kids and stuff, you gotta have a little quiet space somewhere. As days goes on, the life of a pioneer woman is not easy. You get up in the morning before dusk. I made biscuits and gravy and bacon and whatever else because she wanted a big breakfast to start the day. I roasted the beans so that we would have coffee. And if the men were going out into the fields, you had to make a hearty lunch for them. Now if I had to do dishes, I had to boil my water. Not only did I have to boil my water, we were lucky we had, were able to dig a well there. I had to go draw the water, carry it in, boil it, and then I could wash my dishes. When I did laundry, that's an all day affair. So you only did it once a week, because you boiled water, you scrubbed them, you hand wrung them out. We didn't have lines, so you'd lay them out on the prairie grass to dry. Now, soap wasn't readily available either. So every year when we butchered the hogs, I had to take the fat and make lye, make my lye soap. That's a dangerous job. It can spill over and scald you, burn you. You can get your skirts caught on fire. I would not let my children near me or the vats when I was making lime. Children were very apt to, to get, pull one over and get hurt and die because of the burns. There's nothing you could do. For women on the prairie, it was a dawn to dusk job. You cleaned, you swept the floor. When planting came, the wives were out in the field. We're out there hiking our skirts up and we're planting and we're plowing right along with the men. When harvest came, we were out there with them too, cutting, 
tying it up, and doing threshing it, whatever needed to be done, the woman did it. She did the man's job, and she did her job. Most of us had little ones, stair-stepped. We have one in our arms, and one tagging along your leg, and we're still out there doing it. Men, I think, had it maybe a little easier. If it got to them, they said, I gotta go hunt, and they'd go get meat and hunt for a while. We were left with the kids. When I got old and my children grew up, they had more amenities than I did. When I made clothes, it was stitching by hand. My daughter now has a treaded sewing machine. It is just awesome to be able to make clothes so fast. She even has a better way of washing clothes. And now they have a line. Back when we bought more land and acreage, she has a, a, a wooden house. I lived in that sod hubble, sod house for a lot of years. Women died young. Women worked hard. Women died young because they were overworked. And childbirth wasn't easy on them either. But that's what made this area was the hard work of those women. Thank you.